All right, one more video for precipitation at reactions. This one is about precipitates. So using the reaction quotient, oh, that sounds familiar, to predict whether a solution will be saturated or unsaturated. And to use the reaction quotient to predict whether a precipitate will form when the two solutions are mixed. So saturated solution means that you have the maximum amount of dissolved ions. So any more ions and you're going to start to shift the equilibrium towards the solid. And uh, in an unsaturated solution, the solution is still uh, has a lo low enough ion content that the uh, substances that you can even add a couple extra. You can add more ions and you won't have a reaction. So what we can do is we can do a test, find the concentrations attempt the reaction product, the, uh, the, the equilibrium product, and see what happens if you, and so that's, uh, that's our quotient. Ours is not a quotient because there's no, uh, there's no division, but it's still gonna call it the reaction quotient. Take that reaction quotient, and of course, if they are equal, the solution is just saturated, there's no precipitate forming. If the quotient is greater than KSP, then uh, the solution is saturated and a precipitate forms, or in some cases it might be super saturated, but at the very least you cannot add any more solute. And uh, then also if the Q, if the quotient is less than KSP, then it's undersaturated, it's unsaturated, and adding extra solute will not form any precipitation. So here's an example of this. Um, I have a lead, KSP of lead chloride. I have an amount of grams of lead, and it's all being added to 50, uh, of uh, 1,500 milliliters of water. So I got to figure this out. So I'm going to take my lead and think about my equation here. I have lead chloride. It breaks into a lead and two chlorines. So I take my mass, 0.57 grams, multiply it by the molar mass of the lead chloride, this is my PBCL2 molar mass, and I'm going to get some moles, right? Um, that doesn't look right. I believe that it's supposed to be a division here. So it should be a division. Uh, still looks okay. So uh, let's just do a double check just in case. Um, and so here we go. 0.57 divided by 278.106 and we get 0 0.002. Okay, great. So we've got a good conversion there to moles. Always good to check. Now we divide our number of moles divided by a volume will give us a concentration. This is what we're concerned about. So we divide those moles. We get the concentration. This is the concentration of lead chloride because that's what we added in the lab. We added lead chloride. Well, from our equation earlier, we know the concentration of lead chloride would be, if we assume that everything is turned into, it, we've, we're going to assume that the lead chloride has first converted to lead and chlorine, we're going to get a concentration of lead, we're going to get twice that for the concentration of chlorine. Pump those into your equation, our KSP is equal to lead content times chlorine content to the power of 2 and we find a value and it's to the 10 to the negative 18 so going back to our equation we see 10 to the negative 5 negative 18 is much much smaller than negative 5 so it is unsaturated there's still lots of space there to add more lead chloride okay let's try a new one uh, this one's trickier. This one has two volumes. You're mixing two different solutions together. So if 20 milliliters of a certain concentration is mixed with 20 milliliters of another concentration, does the silver bromide precipitate? The KSP of silver bromide is blah. So lots of work being done here. Um, I had to figure out that the 0 0.01 moles per liter of silver nitrate would give me 0 0.01 uh, molar silver solution because um, I had in the back of my mind that the silver nitrate has to dissolve into, by the ionic equations, 
Ag plus Cl. And then the potassium bromide, I had to do the same deal. I did this all in my head a little bit, so because to save myself some space on the page, you should be a little bit more careful than me. And it's again a one-to-one -one reaction. So do this one-to-one -one reaction. Um, based on the one-to-one -one reaction, I can take my molarity, figure out the figure out uh, that I have 0 0.001 molar uh, silver solution. And now here's the tricky part: is I have I'm going to have at the end a new volume. I'm going to be adding. 20 mils plus 20 mils gonna be me 40 mils at the end of the solution. This is a big deal because this means that the concentration is halved. So I have to take however many, however molarity I had before, and I now have to incorporate this new volume. So here I multiplied my molarity by my vo original volume to figure out how many moles of silver I had. So this is just the count of how much silver I actually added into solution. Divide that by the new volume, gives me a new concentration. Do the same, repeat the process with the bromine. I get my new bromine concentration down here. Here's my, my silver concentration. And then I make a test Q using my KSP equation. Uh, so here's my Q down at the bottom. I'm going to multiply those two concentrations find out that it's 10 to the negative 9, compare that to the KSP, the KSP is 10 to the negative 13. Negative 13 is a lot smaller than negative 9, so Q is larger than KSP, so it certainly is going to precipitate. Quite a bit of that will not make it. It will only have the maximum values that are allowed by the KSP in solution, and that's uh, looking back at, say, lesson uh, 4, I believe. To figure out what those values are. So here are some practice equations. Uh, these can be tricky. Watch out for those additional volumes together. Maybe we should do one more together. So we have one liter of one molar H2SO4. It's added, uh, is added and 0 0.0020 moles of solid lead nitrate. Okay, as the lead nitrate dissolves, will lead sulfate precipitate? Well, Let's think about it this way. Over here we have uh, we have one liter. We have one liter of 1.0 molar H2SO4. SO4. H2SO4 will dissociate, assuming full dissociation, will two hydrogens plus uh, one sulfate unit, SO4 two minus. So that means that the concentration of H2SO4 at the beginning is equivalent to the concentration of, H2, of SO4. So we get 1.0 molar SO4 2 minus is what we've got in our solution. There's no change in volume, so that's good. One liter of 0 0.002, so uh, 0 0.0020 moles of lead nitrate. We can think about that as also being equal to 0 0.0020 moles of lead ions, aqueous, assuming that we could get it to dissolve. And it's all in one liter, right? So it's all divided by one liter. So why don't we just call this, uh, this concentration 0 0.0020 molar lead ions. So assuming these are together, let's do a little test. Uh, so if we had lead ions in solution and we mix them with some sulfate ions, SO4 to minus, whoops, to minus aqueous, we would expect the equilibrium to be PBSO4, oh, no charges, and this one would be solid. All right, so based on that equilibrium, it's a one-to-one -one reaction, so KSP is going to be equal to the lead concentration 
times the sulfate concentration. And so that means that we can do a Q test, do a test quotient, take our one point, oops, let's start with our lead, let's do a, a proper replacement, 0 0.00020 times 1.0 for our sulfate. And that one I can do in my head because it's just multiplying by one. This gives us 0 0.0020. Or I like to compare in scientific notation 2.0 times times 10 to the negative 3. Compare that to the KSP they give us. 1.3 times 10 to the negative 8. And we see, of course, negative 8 is much smaller. So this is our KSP. This is our Q. So Q is much smaller than KSP, so we do get precipitate formation. PPT forms. All right. Best of luck. 